All right, guys, it is Valkyrie G, and we are here today with the Majestic Moon. Uh, we're going to be talking MLS. Uh, I know I've been uh, talking a lot about if, you know, the MLS is good, the MLS bad. I know a lot of people hate on the MLS, but how can we make the MLS a better league? You know, how can we make the MLS a better league? All right, Majestic Moon, why don't you... Um, uh, I, um, so one of my points... I think is um, that I think we've seen in, you know, in the past, you know, two, three, you know, I think really ever since, you know, um, Alfonso Davies, you know, we're starting to develop great young players and, you know, um, that are, you know, eventually moving over to Europe and you look and also kind of using it as a, a stepping stone for, you know, kind of, um, you know, MLS teams like to go into like the the South South American market and bring you know young South Americans and you know you look at uh, you know Miguel Almiron you know you know brought you know Atlanta United brought him and then ended up you know making quite a bit of money on him selling him to to, to Newcastle and I think you know um, that's definitely you know I think getting the fact that you know we're developing good young talent and um you know and kind of you know sad to see you know the you know see them you know not in the league anymore but know that you know they're good enough to go over to Europe and um so and then with that you know it kind of feels like it's less and less you know a you know people you know most people say oh it's your retirement league you know you look at um, you know, you know, Beckham, Robbie Keane, you know, Gerard, Lampard. I mean, you know, you look at everybody thought, oh, this is, you know, when Zlatan went to, you know, the Galaxy, he thought, oh, he's not going to, you know, he's not going to, you know, play anymore. And he's, you know, he went back to AC Milan and he's, you know, he's still, you know, being Zlatan. And um, so that's definitely, but, you know, you definitely have, you know, like uh, Gonzalo Higuain, you know, thought, oh, ML he thought MLS is so easy. No, it's not, it's, it's not, it's, I think it's the amount of like, you know, players and, um, you know, managers and, and tactics, I think are, are, you know, are really uh, improving. Um and then one of the other ones is kind of, you know, you kind of need to, you know, need to compare, you know, um, MLS and Liga MX. And um, I definitely, you know, think the, you know, the gap between Liga MX and MLS is definitely closing. But I think, and this was something that my, uh, my friend as kind of uh, European, um, you know, uh, you know, from a European standpoint, basically says the sal the basically the salary cap needs to go. And I know it's kind of there as a as a you know as a safety net to you know to make sure you know you don't you know kind of you know go bankrupt or anything. But um, I mean that I think that's definitely something that you know you look at it and it it really what it's. It really is what it is, um, you know, a, a salary cap and, you know, you can only play, you know, a player, you know, so much, you know, when they can, you know, go over to Europe and, you know, they don't really, you know, have a, a sal. you know, I don't really think many, you know, uh, leagues over in Europe really have a, a, a salary cap or, you know, they can maybe be earning maybe a little bit more and, you know, the potential to uh, play in Europe. Um, uh, probably one of the most obvious ones. I think that you know, I think all MLS is the uh, is the is the refereeing in MLS. That I I could go on a I could go on a rant. You know, you know I I've, I've gone on rants with you know my friends in in England basically saying, oh, who who are the you know who has the wor worst referees, you know, MLS or uh, England. And it's like, they can be like, oh, take a look at this call. And I'm like, I raise you, look at this call. And they're like, touche, how about this one? It's, 
I mean, it's something, and I think it's uh, as far as something that I like is, um, you know, if um, I like about refs kind of that they kind of weren't doing first when uh, VAR was implemented in England was um, the, the English referees weren't going over to look at, to go over and look at the screen. Um, whereas, you know, MLS, you know, you kind of, you know, they, you know, most when they go to VAR, they usually go over and look at the screen. Um, so, I mean, that's really, and then, um, kind of, uh, basically, um, from my friend, you know, from a European standpoint, he basically, I mean, he basically says it's not to like make it more competitive, but he kind of likes the uniqueness. He said, he, like I said, he said the salary cap needs to go. Um, he basically, and then he also said playoffs need to be more inclusive as uh, while they are cool, you know, kind of, you know, Americanized, you know, with the playoffs, it kind of, he says it takes away from, you know, the supporters shield race. And um, I think that's definitely, you know, you know, it's, it's like, you know, you really want to, you know, you don't want to try to be the, you know, best, you know, best team in the, you know, regular season. And it's like, oh, you know, if, you know, that's gone, you know, we want to, you know, push and, you know, win, you know, uh, you know, make it to the playoffs. And, and then another one, it's always the, you know, I think a, a big debate is, um, it says promotion and relegation needs to happen, which, like I said, there's kind of, I would, I would like I would like to see it happen, but knowing how much the owners have put into it, and um, you know, compared to uh, maybe like maybe make like a MLS one, MLS two, kind of break it up into you know two leagues, and um, I don't know maybe between like the I mean, kind of I think the I think the USL have talked about the potential I think of going of uh, promotion or relegation between the championship and league one, which I think, I think that it, that would be really cool, but I don't ever, I wouldn't ever see between USL and MLS really like those teams really ever, um, you know, that as far as fo um, factoring into the promotion or, and relegation. I, um, I feel like promotion slash relegation needs to happen because you look at um, like the same teams just like losing over and over again. There's really no punishment for being shit. Um, there, you can just be awful and that's fine. Guess what? You're going to get the first draft pick. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you don't really have the, you know, appeal that, you know, you have, you know, the, you know, you have the uh, Leicester, you know, Leicester City where, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I mean, you know, down at, you know, down at the end of Christmas and then, you know, next season they just, you know, they go on the, you know, fairy tale and, you know, 5,000 to one and, and win something that, I mean, I don't think you really would ever see something like that in an MLS, really. Uh, I, I, here's my big issue with the MLS, and I have said this, I've already, like, I've mentioned this on other videos, is that I hate how many expansion teams are bringing in. And I know Minnesota is an expansion team, so it's a little bit hypocritical. But, like, I think the issue is, is when you're bringing in three or four expansion teams per two seasons you're having a lot of shakeup between players right so you're having players who are it kind of disrupts all the teams in the league when they're getting players pulled from them and then I think it's just hard because it's it's just like oh you want to be a new team cool like we have so many teams like you look at Eng like you look at England right they have this set limit so we're always just including more and I understand why they do it. It's a money thing. But at least if you're going to do it, you got to split the leagues up, right? Have the MLS thing and then have 
like have, you know, what they could do is they could say, all right, guys, this next season matters because your place determines if you if you're in the top MLS league or if you're in the MLS championship. Like, and I think that would really be something. And then if a new team wants to come in, they have to come into the championship because these teams, you can have an expansion team, but and they'll get a really cool new stadium, but there's no reason for them to be good. There's no reason for them to want to compete. And I think Miami might be the exception because I do feel like Miami wants to compete. They just, for some reason, suck. I have never watched an Inter Miami game. Um, I just, uh, but I think that's bad. I just, we need some form to make it more competitive because I feel like in England, when a game matters, right? You're watching the Premier League. Okay, it's the end of the season. Are they going to get a European spot or are they not? You know, this game, everything's online. They're throwing everything at it. And for the MLS, it's like, Oh, it just determines our draft place next year. Yeah, yeah, and that's and then also like it's like, you know, if you you know settle it into you know MLS, you know, kind of, you know, you did go into tiers. You go like a a lower MLS and like a, a higher MLS. You kind of then you kind of then you kind of need to put almost a limit as far as okay how many teams can there be in the, in the, you know, in the, in the championship, is there going to be a max or is, you know, it going to keep, and you look at it and, but you also, I think also have to look at, you know, keep adding, um, you know, teams and you look at the uh, amount of you know, schedules and, and, and games and games played, you have to look at that and, you know, you know, almost sometimes, you know, you're playing three game you know, three games in one week and, uh, you know, you're playing, you know, on the weekend, you know, the Wednesday, you know, another game on the weekend. And, um, you know, do you do you have, you know, do you have, you know, a good, you know, schedule and you have to take also into account like, you know, the traveling and, you know, I, you know, kind of you look at this season. I mean, you really haven't, you know, seen, you know, us, you know, Minnesota, you know, like Minnesota, I think we've really only played like maybe like one, one or I think, yeah, we played DC and then um, we play uh, Philly. And I think that's it. I think really, I think, yeah, that's the only Eastern conference teams we play. Otherwise, you know, you look at, we, you know, we're playing, you know, sporting Kansas city, you know, three times, you know, Colorado three times, I mean, I can under understand, you know, because, you know, of the, you know, of the current situation in the world that we're living in right now, but, um, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, needs to be taught, you know, talked about is, you know, the schedule and, you know, are we going to put a limit as far as, you know, if they move it into, you know, kind of two tiers, like, are we going to put a limit on the lower tier? Or is it just going to keep on, or do, you know, or do they, as they add more in the, and, you know, in the, you know, second tier, do they add, you know, do they also add more, you know, you more get promoted, you know, maybe that, I mean, that doesn't really make sense, but like. No, just, no, I get what you mean. Like if, an, you know, if another team gets added to the championship, one more um, team gets promoted. So it yeah. can stay even. Yep. I get that. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's something that's like, oh, I could, I could really see that, you know, happening and. It's definitely some, I mean, something I think, you know, people need to, I think, uh, think about it. And so. Uh, my second point is something that Ethan Finley has actually talked about. Um, and that is, if they're not going to do this promotion and relegation thing, bring back the reserves, the reserves team. Um, I think one thing about the MLS is it, you know, we have all these young people right? We have all these young stars and especially through the draft, but I feel like a lot of them are not playing and we're loaning them out to USL teams, right? Um, Patrick Weah, I think he's going to be an absolute star for us. I already have a jersey. After the first game, I literally went and bought his jersey. That's all, man. Um, my cousin went to high school with him, um, has played Xbox with him. Uh, he says that he's going to be, that when he watched in there, he's an absolute stud. 
right? So he was like, this guy's going to make it. He's going to be great. Um, Justin McMaster. Oh, I'm so excited. I think he's an absolute game changer. We put him in. Absolute impact. This rush of energy. This just every time I see him play, I you he's hungry. He wants it. But they're just not getting enough game time. So what if we did the reserves leagues and they don't have to play as many games as the MLS, right? But it's still giving them a chance to get game time, play, work together. But then they can still be available for that first team. You know, if the first team needs them, right? Like. Yeah. It, it's just like I'm so excited for Justin McFaster, Patrick Wea. I know we have Fred Emmings. I, you know, we haven't seen anything from him. The first Minnesota homegrown player, like it, it's just it's hard because I feel like if you can push them, like they can, then they could still train with the first team, but then they can go play games against other reserve teams, and then that will actually help with depth, right? You're not going to see as many injury crises because you're going to be able to have um, higher numbers of players. And then that will help bring in young players in the league. So you're not having guys who are 39, right? Play, you know, older guys get more focused. You're going to have more of a youth movement and that can really make it more exciting. Yeah, no, yeah, I think that's definitely, like, I remember, you know, when I saw Wea, I thought he looked really good. I thought, um, you know, uh, McMaster went out, you know, I've seen him play. I don't think, you know, he's not gotten that much, but I think Keith, Keith says, and, you know, I think he said that, you know, he sees basically a little bit of Kevin Molino you know, McMaster, and if, you know, if, you know, I mean, that's pretty high knowing, you know, Kevin Molino, you know, I think, you know, I think, I mean, I'm going to go on record and probably say he's probably one of the best non-designated players that probably should have been, a, like, that could have been a designated player. And uh, fantastic. Like, I know, you know, when they said, uh, I think he said he saw Kevin Molino in him, but even, like, more, even more athletic than Kevin Molino. And, you know, that's really saying something, you know, comparing him to a guy who, you know, Heath brought, you know, you know, kind of, you know, brought him and, you know, mentored him in Orlando. And I, um, when Kaka was, you know, in Orla um, Orlando, I think he, uh, even like, you know, Kaka, you know, Ballon d'Or winner, World Cup winner, bas like basically said about Molino, this guy can go over and play in Europe. And, I mean, he, I mean, they, you know, really never got the chance to, and, you know, but, um, you know, what, what he's done is, you know, fantastic. And, you know, if, if, you know, Justin McMaster, you know, can have, you know, any, uh, you know, good, a good, you know, kind of, you know, might live up, might not live up to hype. And I mean, you're also looking at, uh, I think, you know, kind of one that we glazed over, you looked at, you know, Thomas Chacon, you know, the young designated, you know, Uruguayan and kind of that, you know, we've loaned out and we're like, he's really never even, you know. I forgot about him. Yeah, I mean, and now he's playing for, you know. Liverpool. Back, yeah, Liverpool down in, in Uruguay and, you know, getting game time. And it's like, oh, you know, if we bring him back, it's like, Look at the you know plethora of you know uh, uh wingers we have and you know def it's I think it's definitely something that you know um definitely you know getting in with the reserves and yeah you know you have you know I think you know New York kind of they have theirs in the in the U uh, USL championship Tacoma defense for Seattle um. I mean, there's plenty of teams that, you know, they have their, they have kind of their reserve team, you know, in the, in the uh, USL. And I think that's, I think that's definitely something that needs, that needs to make the comeback. But the thing is, USL and the MLS are not affiliated. Yeah. Or they used to be, I believe, but now they don't have a partnership. But I think um, it, it's hard because then they kind of screws over those teams. Um, I think that, it's definitely something that needs to be looked at. Uh, I know a lot of players have actually like supported the idea. So that is big. And then my last point, or, uh, yeah, my last point, or two more points, sorry. What, 
refing. You, I'm just going to say a few things. I saw, I was scrolling through Instagram the other day. And uh, if you can see that. Um, <laughs> so bad. Like our, well, I, our referees, the reason why they're not good is because they're not full-time things, right? So mm -hmm. I know in the NWSL, the refs are um, unionizing because they say, hey, if you want the best refs, you've got to pay for the best refs. And I agree. I think this is a league problem. I think if we want the best refs, we need to pay for them. And also we, I want transparency. I want when like in football, right? When you, I want to hear what they're talking about. I want to hear that thought process. I think the players deserve transparency because basically, you know, we've had some bad calls that Reynoso red card. Like it, it just, it feels like every week there's something at least in the Minnesota United game, but there's a long list of, I'm sorry, we missed this. So we missed this. We need, to, we need to pay for the best rush. If we want to be a good league, we need to add transparency and say, okay, this is why it was like this. You know, explain the calls. The players deserve that. The players deserve transparency. I mean, it does. Look at look at the Vancouver penalty. Look at the last minute Vancouver penalty. I mean, usually I think uh, like MLS, they usually like every week they usually you know if they're you know VAR and they go and they kind of review. They did. They did not that week they did not include it because i think they knew how much they they screwed that up yeah. and you look at it and i know like i know vancouver 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 fans they're like that was not a, that was they're like that was not i mean i'm like they're like you know we're glad we got the draw but that was not a penalty and, you know, you look at, you know, Finley was kind of like, how, you know, how, and, you know, it, it's just an incredible the amount of, and then, but then, you know, it's also like, oh, you look at, you know, oh, it's conky calf and, um, you know, you look at um, it and, um, you know, I think, you know, kind of hit the nail, you know, spot on, you know, referee, you know, we need, we need better, you know, we need better referee referees. And um, I mean, and I know maybe like, I don't maybe have like a, you know, a referee press conference, you know, maybe at the end of the game where, you know, you can kind of, you know, there's, you know, maybe certain moments where you could be like, okay, or like, you know, if he gave a, you know, if he gave a, you know, a card that, you know, it wasn't for, oh, like persistent fouls or it could basically be like, you know, kind of here's the, here's the thought process, you know, that we went through to determine this. And um, I know there's, you know, there's that, um, you know, viral video on YouTube that went back from the A-League. I think the guy is, I think he's now uh, I think he's a Premier League rep now, but it was like his last A League game, and they had him mic'd up. And you know, I think that's something I think you you could see, but also you might not want just because you know, kind of the the language you might he you know see here and um, that. I mean, yeah, no, that's something the referee needs to needs to improve. My last point is, uh, it's actually like a business side of MLS, is marketing, okay? I am a digital marketing major. Uh, so basically, uh, the MLS has a very hard time competing with uh, the NFL, MLB, NBA, right? So we got other big sports in the United States that are taking away from MLS. But the thing I think is the MLS is so unique and it, that we have this supporter, there's supporter groups, right? Like I've brought people to the Wonderwall at Allianz Field and they just, they're just like, oh my gosh, that is like nothing I've experienced before. Like they love it. They're all for it and they want to go back and they want to go there. And it's, those tickets are actually very affordable. I'm a college student and I can afford them, right? I've gone to many games this year. So I think the MLS has something like that where, 
they need to play on that. Come feel this experience. Come feel this atmosphere because it is truly amazing. And I just think that we they just don't play on it enough. Yeah, I know that's some like I brought, you know, when I brought, you know, two, you know, two of my friends, you know, from England, um, you know, I brought them and um, brought them to the Wonderwall and they were like that. I mean, we weren't, you know, physic, you know, physically, you know, in the, you know, standing and jumping, but, you know, we were kind of, you know, there and it was, they said it was, it was nothing, you know, like Europe and I've been to, I've been to. Uh, well, I've been to a game at 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 uh at Good Goodison. That was a good. I've been to a, a league a league two game, um uh late uh late in Orient, and I can tell you just I mean I know the sample size you know and you're you know me being you know going to kind of you know two very you know kind of you know the top league and you know the you know league two, but the the wonder wall is, I mean, I, I love it. I remember, you know, my parents surprised me for my 21st with season tickets in the wonder wall. And after the first season, I kind of, I jokingly, you know, told my parents, I'm like, Hey, do you guys want to go get, do you guys want to get seats or do you guys want to keep in the wonder wall? And they're like, what are you talking about? We're keeping, we're staying in the wonder wall. And I'm like, okay 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 i mean that i mean the atmosphere is i think you know unrivaled and you know the the you know the supporter groups and you know kind of oh you know the whole idea of oh for night for 90 minutes your rivals but for like the rest you know you're you know your friends you don't you know you don't throw shade at each other you know you're you know, you're, you're, you're human beings, but you know, for 90 minutes, your enemies. And after that, you know, it is what it is. And that's something that I love about, you know, I love about, M uh, I love about MLS and the, the, the supporter culture and, um, you know, what the, you know, supporters have, you know, have done. And um, it's, it's, it's incredible. I also, I went to the last, I, I didn't go to the Austin game, but I went to the Colorado game and I took my younger sister who has Down syndrome. It was her first game, um, her first big sporting event since COVID started. Um, but, you know, we went and one thing I love is I've noticed that at other sporting events, people can be quite rude. Um, even if, you know, you're on the same side, which is quite rude, but everybody was so nice when we were there, right? You know, it didn't matter if they were an employee or a fan. I just think the atmosphere is so friendly at these games. Like people, people um, getting out of their way so she could have an easier time walking or, you know, if I'm trying to take a selfie, oh, hey, let me, let me take a picture or here, I'll move so you can get a better like view of the field, right? Like everybody is just so nice and i've noticed that every single game i've gone to it's just a lot of kind people so that is one thing that i really think that like is not said enough oh yeah, I, know. yeah. It's, I i love it and you know it's something you know that i wouldn't i wouldn't change as far as you know the out you know the home atmosphere and i have i have yet to go i've yet to go to a away game but like like my parents and i like we have we have basically start like kind of started a list as far as okay this is the order we're gonna you know maybe once or twice a season try to catch you know one you know an away game at you know at you know we're gonna try to catch you know an away game here an away game here and you know go and uh you know taking the taking the culture and um you know fantastic and get to you know experience other mls stadium atmosphere all right. So that I don't know if you have any final thoughts. I uh, I don't. Um, other than hey, bring an NWSL team to Minnesota. Why not? Why not? Why why not? It's you know, good stadium, good fans, good food. Could happen. Could happen. All right.
Thank you so much, everyone. Make sure you go subscribe to the Majestic Moon. Leave a like, subscribe, comment down below. You already know what to do. It's your girl.